My apologies, see, I forgot my manners. I get on the mic because it's my life. You show off for girls and cameras. You a pop star, not a rapper, vanilla ice or a hammer. Y'all hear this crappy dumping out? Somebody get him a pamper and a crown for thee. The best have heard about me. You can only spell brilliant by first spelling breed. Now see, naturally, I do my stuff with perfection. Better call a bodyguard because you gonna need some protection. And on this here election, the people crown a new leader. You didn't see this coming to your ghostwriters then either. I came here to ether. I'm sorry to do this to you. This is no longer a battle. It's your funeral, boo. I'm murdering you. On my corner, they call me coroner. I'm warning you. Tell the truth. This dude is boring you. You confused like a foreigner. I'll explain with ease. You just a casualty in the reality of the madness of free. No fallacies. I spit maladies. Cause of fatalities and do a casually damaging rappers without bandaging. And she finds herself in the center of a controversy too big for her to control. But as her family's situation gets worse, she's desperate to make it, even if it means becoming the very thing everyone's made her out to be. Andrew Thomas, hello. Hi. Congratulations on the new book. Why was it important for you to write a book about hip hop being an art form? It was extremely important for me to write about hip hop as an art form because hip hop is not often seen as an art form. Um, so often it's just seen as, oh, it's a hobby, oh, it's, it's trash, it's this, it's that. But it's a way of expression, um, it's a culture, it's a way of life for so many young people and I wanted to validate that for them. Um, but I also wanted to show how hip hop can be used as a form of storytelling so that maybe even educators would look at this and allow their students to express themselves through raps, through through hip hop, um, it, it, it's honestly it, it, it's one of those things that can be used in such a way that that it can change a young person's life. So I really wanted to validate it for them. Your first book, The Hate You Give, uh, was a blockbuster young adult phenomenon, and it dealt with some pretty big subjects, the most sensitive um, topics and contentious topics in America today: race, privilege, and the killing of unarmed black people at the hands of police. How on earth did you know where to start with your next book? <laughs> you know, it was a bit intimidating um, when I started the second book, but I just had to remind myself that I was writing it for myself, but more importantly for young people who are a lot like the main character, Brianna. Um, these young people who want to make themselves heard, but they're criticized for how they say things as opposed to people paying attention to what they're saying. The Hate You Give, the story of a 16-year-old who witnesses the police shooting of an unarmed friend, was made into a movie in 2018. And you write for this young adult genre that's best known for Twilight and Harry Potter. Yeah. Uh, did you always know that you had a voice and, and how did you get into writing? You know, I didn't know that I had a voice. I actually got into writing through um, rapping and that led to storytelling somehow because I wanted to say so much and wanted to tell stories but I couldn't do it as well as I wanted to in just a song, like a, a little song, a few lyrics. I couldn't tell the story that I wanted to tell. So storytelling became my way of expressing myself. Books. For me, as a teenager, they didn't show me me. Twilight was huge when I was a teenager, but it wasn't something I could connect with. Hip-hop was. And so as an author now, I want to bridge that gap for young people who feel as if books aren't for them. I want to write the books that are for them. And The Hate You Give was obviously a massive success. Yes. On the come up, um, it's already out in English yes. and it's been doing really well as well. But it wasn't that easy, was it, to get your book published in the beginning? In fact, I think you got over... 100 rejections or something like that? Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. And and as a writer, I think that's just a part of the process. I think every single author who has been published has been rejected at some point or another. Um, but it, it helps me recognize, too, that that may not have been the story to tell at that time. And that's OK. It's OK to move on to something else. I learned a lot from that process. You used to rap. Yeah. And your first book is actually taken from, the title is taken from the late rapper Tupac, who once said Thug Life, which is the name of his group, um, will, stood for the hate you give, little infants fucks everybody. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that phrase? Tell us about it. Yeah, Thug Life is one of those phrases that I, I think the more people think on it, the more they realize how 
relevant it still is. Um, when Tupac said it, he said it in 1992 in reference to riots in Los Angeles, which a lot of people thought were in response to Rodney King, but it was also in response to the shooting death of a 15-year-old girl named La Latasha Harland. And Tupac said that the hate that was given to this child affected everybody. And I think we see that constantly. The hate that's given to young people affects us all. We see it in the Black Lives Matter movement with the deaths of Trayvon Martin, Michael Brown. Um, and, and we see it too, even now, as young activists speak up and speak out on a global stage, the hate they're given affects us all. So it, it, thug life is, pre is really relevant. It's one of those things that hopefully at some point more people recognize that, that we have a responsibility for what we put into young people today because it has a way of coming back and affecting us all. On the come up, strength lies in the way that it explores the loves, fears and friendships of a community in America that's becoming increasingly hostile towards the other. The Black Lives Matter movement has been a lot less high profile since Donald Trump was elected. What has his impact been on black identities? Um, I think the problem right now is that not necessarily that the movement has stopped doing work young unarmed black people are still being killed by police officers. Um, they're still losing their lives unjustly. Um, they're still um, not receiving justice in the court of law, but because Trump made a tweet, that's what people are talking about. Um, I think though, within the black community, um, for a lot of us, this isn't new. You know, um, we're not surprised by Trump or Trumpism or we're not surprised by people who follow him and their beliefs and, and, and their bigotry. We're not surprised. But if nothing else, I think that more of us recognize our power as voters and what we can do to change things. And Tupac also said uh, the biggest gangs in America are the politicians. Mm -hmm the Democrats and the Republicans. Do you agree with that? I do, I do. An updated version would come from um, Kendrick Lamar. He said in a song, um, he called them Democrips and Rebloodicans, <laughs> which is a take on the names Bloods and Crips. I agree. Um, so much of America is run on gang culture in ways that people don't recognize. Um, I, I look at how our, our current politicians are so protective of the president, uh, the Republicans are, and the way they're protective of him is the way gang members are protective of one another. They're not snitching and all of this and that. It's the same thing. It's just in a suit. We see in the book this universe uh, that exists daily in prejudice, in racism, um, and double standards. We see Bree's brother, he can't get a job despite the fact he's got a university degree, so he ends up working in a pizza restaurant. And then we see young Jojo, who's only 10, he can't wait to be a gang member mm -hmm. because he sees this world where actually that's his best option. Mm -hmm. um, and working hard and going to school actually doesn't pay off necessarily. Um, it's a cycle, can it be broken? Yes, it absolutely can be broken. I'm proof that it can be broken. But um, it, it's the thing is, more young people have to know that it can be broken. And, and that's where representation comes in hand. I think had I, as a young person, seen more authors who looked like me, I would have recognized that it was something that I could do. I think for me as an author, my job is to show young people a world beyond their own at times too, so that they can know that there's more that they're capable of doing. In The Hate You Give, uh star shuttles between these two worlds, doesn't she, of like the poor black world and this privileged white world. And she's code switching yes. all of the time. You must find yourself in a lot of white spaces now yeah. as, this, as this literary sensation. Do you have to code switch? Um, I do, but sometimes I feel like I do, but then I allow myself not to. Um, I, I, as I get older, I'm getting to the point where I'm I want people to accept me as I am, whoever I am. Um, and, and I feel like the success I've had has come from being my true authentic self in my writing. So I feel as if you can expect my true authentic self when you meet me. I try not to code switch as much, but I think it's just something that's ingrained in all of us to an extent. We're all a little different at home versus in public or at work. You know, women, we code switch all the time when we enter male dominated spaces. So it, it, it's something we all do at, at, to to a degree, but I'm allowing myself to do it a little less. In On The Come Up, we see lots of structural racism that exists, like black kids being followed in shops, like teachers who are trying to be saviors. Mm -hmm. um, 
that is quite uncomfortable to read, especially as a white person. Uh, I wondered, how often do you experience racism? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I, I experience it in a lot more ways than people would realize that I do. Um, racism isn't just throwing around racial slurs. Sometimes it's the smaller things. It's the microaggressions. So, for instance, um, when I was at the airport on the way here and they were telling everyone to line up for first class, people didn't think that I belonged in first class. They like, moved around me as if I was in the wrong space. I try not to focus on it too much. I, I, I don't let other people's ignorance dictate my life. And by writing about these things in a book that is for everybody... Yes. Uh, ..is a way of dealing with that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I've come to learn um, since becoming a published author that books have a way of connecting with people from all walks of life, even when the stories are specific. Um, I've had readers of The Hate You Give range from age 8 to age 92. <laughs> and, and, and black, white, Asian, Native American, I've had so many different readers. So books can connect with people in a multitude of ways. On the Come Up is being made into a film. Yes. How much are you involved in that? Yeah, I'm excited because this time around I'm a producer. So I'm very involved in the process. Um, I'm working with the other producers and the screenwriter right now on the script. So I get a bit more say this time around. On the Come Up is out in France now. Have you got a message for readers? Yes, the message for readers is find your voice and make some noise. <laughs>